Ta-da! Malastari here, and welcome to A Light in the Dark. This world is not fair. There was a saying. The world is one big and intricate machine. With a people as its cogs, and the law as its screws. Countless pieces connected with each other in order to operate. Through continuous refining, on top of repeated collapse and reconstruction, modern society is eventually formed. The more complicated a machine appears to be, the more delicate it really is. One loose screw would stop the whole thing. One failed detail would lead to collapse. Therefore, we must be ever vigilant and watchful and remove every single problematic piece. Mommy needs to head out and take care of something, so have dinner without me. You can eat whatever you like. If Daddy calls, just tell him I am in class, okay? The laughter of an unknown man, hurried footsteps, a started car engine. At that moment, I heard the sound of dissonance from the machine. was very cold. I felt the freezing cold before I regained my consciousness. It wasn't so much that I felt cold when I woke up, but the icy air itself caused me to wake up. I opened up my eyes and only saw darkness. All I could figure out was that I was in a small room. Strangely, I had no clue about the sight before me. This wasn't my room, nor that of a hotel room. My head hurt as if I had a hangover. I tried to stand up to go turn on the lights, but got no response from my numb limbs. Where am... Um... The smell of cigarettes and mold was cringeworthy. Sobering up, I finally realized something was not right. What happened to me? A sense of unease appeared in my mind. I tried to calm down and organize my thoughts. I recalled that I was on my way home from cram school. Finally up, rich boy. Who are... A unfamiliar voice rang in my ears, right when I opened my mouth to ask. A foot out of nowhere landed on my stomach, kicking me right towards the wall. <clears throat> I felt my stomach turning and almost vomited. However, all that came out was a fit of dry coughing. I couldn't stop spasming on the ground. I couldn't think at all thanks to the intense pain, but was also too scared to make any sound. Who is she? What is she doing? What happened? My body hurts. Countless questions went through my mind, but before I could talk, I heard that cold voice again. Who gave you permission to talk? There was no change in her expression, as she watched me struggle. There was nothing but pure enmity in her eyes. You better be quiet. I have no patience, no intention to play nice with you. Got that? I struggled to stand up. They came to the shocking realization that my limbs weren't numb. They were tightly tied up with rope. I struggled against it, but the rope was much tighter than I imagined. Rich boy, do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? Or do you only respond after a good beating? Bastard. Another kick made me almost scream and curse at her. However, knowing now was not the time to confront her, I gripped my teeth to force myself to stay calm. 
Anything I said at that moment could be fatal. I had to grasp the situation first. Suddenly, she got closer, not realizing her intention. My body instinctively tried to move away from her touch. <laughs> Scared. Noticing my slight reaction, she gave a snort of contempt. The last shred of defiance disappeared. As soon as the blade touched my body, there was no chance of victory no matter how I resisted. I waited for her next move. All you could hear in the quiet room was our shallow breathing. The tip of the blade moved across my skin, making a small cut. My tensed up nerves were extra sensitive. I could feel the exact temperature of the air, the roughness of the rope and the sharpness of the blade. There was a certain feeling of warmth from the blood that flowed out from the wound and down my arm. Nevertheless, my mind was extremely clear. Kidnapping, human trafficking, organ trade? A few possibilities came to mind, but there was no way to determine which. Since we had to hang out a little before I get the ransom, let me make a few things clear. Don't try to run or talk without permission. I don't mind breaking a few bones. Humans are sturdy after all. You hear me? I nodded quietly. I couldn't digest all the information at once, but one key word stood out. Ransom? <laughs> the blade left my skin, and I swore I heard a little sigh escape from her. The sound of light footsteps moved towards the wall. Before I could feel even more confused, a glaring light broke through the darkness in the room. Not able to adjust to the sudden brightness, it took me quite a while to finally open my eyes. What came into view was totally unfamiliar to me. The room was roughly 300 square feet in size. A wall that was meant to be painted was now modeled, its original color no longer visible. Time made everything in the room, such as the wooden chair, desk, or bed, look decayed. The moldy smell in the air was reminiscent of old ruins you'd see in movies. The owner of the room stood near the window, making a tawny smirk with her lips. Never lived in a place like this, rich boy. The words were clearly provocative. Bearing with a burning pain, I tried to observe her through the lamplight. She was a young-looking woman. She wore a dark overcoat and a scarf. Her shoulder-length hair casually scattered behind her back, with bangs almost covering her eyes. Surprisingly, she did not wear a face mask, helmet, or anything else to stop me from staring at her. She didn't seem to mind her face being seen. She didn't have the stereotypical look of a criminal, despite a hint of unease on her mirror face. There wasn't one bit of guilt within those dark brown pupils of hers that were staring straight back at me. You know what? I hate people like you. She was talking to herself and ignored how pale my face was and made no attempt to elaborate. This was not a conversation, but a simple declaration. Who was she? Where was I? What did she want? Why did she do such a thing? Countless questions circulated in my head, but I couldn't make a sound even with my mouth open. What eventually did come out was something totally unrelated. Why me? The unfamiliar, dry voice sounded rough like sandpaper. Why? The girl mumbled my question next to the window. Her face reflected the damp light. Orange spots of light scattered across her messy hair, dancing like fire. She hung her head in contemplation. It took her a while to raise her head again with a grin. No particular reason. As though it was only natural. The empty voice held no emotion, but a malevolent sense of pleasure. 
The world is just unfair. Isn't that your favorite line? Seeing the shock in my eyes, she chuckled. With that mocking statement, a curtain was raised on this kidnapping incident. Oh, that's odd. You can only save on each day, so you can't save at any time. That's interesting. I stood in a world of darkness. There was no sky nor ground, only endless darkness. A dream. In this haze, I felt like I was in a dream, yet I couldn't control my thoughts. The intermittent noise was annoying like a radio with poor signal. Suddenly, the ground started to slowly sink like quicksand. I tried to move my legs, but realized I couldn't move. Feet, legs, and then my arms. The darkness gradually devoured my body. I heard that vivid disdain before my vision was overtaken. I hate people like you. Huh, so I have these options? Still half asleep, I opened my eyes. The room before me was still the same unfamiliar room. So it wasn't a dream. A long sigh couldn't relieve the depression in my chest, and my heart sunk to the very bottom. I was kidnapped. Nice anime poster. <laughs> what were their objective? What should I do? My mind was all blank, and there was more confusion than fear. They said one could be petrified when facing a threat. It was fight or flight. Reflectively stopping your actions to avoid catching a predator's attention was probably the best way to describe my feeling then. I tried to pull out the rope, but nothing happened. The headache was hard to bear. The painkiller I usually prepared was in my bag, which was out of my reach in the situation. Damn it. My mind did get clearer after sleeping. Everything that happened yesterday still felt like a dream, but the reality lay right before my eyes. The morning light brightened up the room. The peeling paints on the wall and the old pieces of furniture. There was nothing but decay, as though nothing had been touched for a long time. Was it an abandoned house? Did I actually live here? The kidnapper was nowhere to be found. I couldn't hear anything, and thus couldn't tell how many people were around. Perhaps shouting for help might catch someone's attention. But the kidnapper might also be right outside the door. Take stock of the situation, boy! Let's take stock of the situation. My yelling might not be heard, and I could be in trouble if it got the kidnapper's attention instead. I could still feel the pain from where I got kicked the day before. I tried to make myself a little more comfortable and relax my back by leaning on the wall. First, my body. My hands were tightly tied up so I couldn't move them, let alone wiggle out of these ropes. My body overall was alright, but I couldn't really rest in this position. I had to save my energy to escape. So, where to start? Where was I? I'm actually surprised that I am timed. That is actually pretty cool, I like this. The house appeared to be more than a decade old. The sort of old apartment was everywhere in Taiwan. Okay, so I'm Taiwanese. If I could move to the window, I could at least tell which floor I was on. But I couldn't see anything from there. I was kidnapped near a construction site. Could I at least estimate a rough distance range by calculating the time in car ride? I tried to picture it in my mind, but gave up quickly. I had no clue what type of vehicle I was on, nor the exact length of time. Any estimate I made would be pure speculation. 
Before I could think further, I heard footsteps outside. I couldn't help but tense up. Who was that? Oh, the fucking kidnapper! Duh! Welcome back, honey! How was work? Before I made up my mind on how to respond, I saw the girl pushing open the door. Yeah, I, I see that you have a knife. Are you gonna make me dinner or what? Holding the knife and wearing the same overcoat and scarf, she stared at me. I tried to look back calmly, but I could still clearly feel my rapid heartbeat. Finally up, rich boy? I looked at her silently, trying to guess her attention from her words or actions. I was in an unfamiliar situation, and there were too many questions left unanswered. The location, the time, their objectives, any sort of information would help. You're free once your daddy pays up, so stay quiet. Or I can't guarantee what will happen to you. With that said, she sat next to a window and lit up a cigarette. Smoking's bad for you, missy. It was easier to see her face in the sunlight. Her neglected long hair was just messy, with those long bangs almost covering her eyes. The pale skin was not from makeup. More likely, she was born with or the result of poor health. Or maybe drug abuse? Hey. The girl's voice broke my train of thought. She coldly stared back at me with a cigarette in her hand. I'll make a few things clear. When I contact your dad, don't talk, don't move, don't get any funny ideas. This is not a game. I don't have any patience. And I don't mind shutting you up by breaking one or two bones. Digesting her every word, I pondered what to respond. Got it. Got it. I'll play by your rules. Still accessing the best way to deal with her, I should avoid triggering her for my own safety. You better be. I'm free once you get the money, right? What do you think? Her nonchalant answer proved my guess. Not that her consent would mean anything. If a kidnapper's promise means anything, then even world peace is not a dream. Hao Chen Jiang, age 19, only son of CEO Hua Xiang. Fuck, I don't know how to say Chinese in Taiwanese. Hao Shen Yang, age 19, only son of CEO Hua Xiang. Address is Chong Chen, Road Lane 2. Lives by himself, buys breakfast at 10 a.m. every day, jogs at the park at 8 p.m. Who jogs at 8 p.m.? It's night, buddy! Cram school every Tuesday and Thursday, which ends at 9.30 p.m. Always takes a shortcut via the walkway that's under construction. She lazily reads my information, and from time to time paused to look at me, as though anticipating something. So you basically stalked me? Quite comprehensive. Hmm. She grunted after noticing my lack of reaction. The leaking of personal information was nothing new, but it was still uncomfortable to hear someone knowing your daily schedule like the back of her hand. Was it an acquaintance behind all this if she knew that much about me? My best attempts to conjure up my memory still failed. Hard to believe she has any reason to pick me. No one but my parents and the building's security knew my schedule, and none of them could be the source of the leak. First things first. You don't have to keep my feet tied up, you know. I have no intention to run. Even if you don't believe me, my hands are still tied. Also, you have a knife. I can't run away like this anyway. It's just uncomfortable being tied up like this. And it is just point... I told you before. She interrupted me. Squatting before me and looking at me right in the eyes. I hate people like you. Having too much money to spend, never knowing any pain, everything just goes your way. Look, it is not my fault my parents worked hard, okay? You know nothing but still act almighty. 
like some big shot. Uncomfortable? You think I care? More uncomfortable, the better I say. What a messed up personality. I felt her enmity, but I didn't want to say that to her. Too many people found society unfair. Always blaming his or her failure on someone else. Thinking he or she was a victim of the system. If it was this easy to convince her, she wouldn't even end up kidnapping someone. Hmm, nothing to say now. Noticing my silence, she tried to provoke me. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I knew I shouldn't try to argue with her, but I couldn't stop myself. No, tell me what you're talking about. I know life is unfair, it's crap, okay? But you have to tell me why life is unfair to you. I couldn't tolerate such an extreme take on things. If I let her keep going, she might think she was onto something. I don't know anything about you, yet you think you know everything about me? My words went straight for the fallacy of her logic. I couldn't help but laugh. If you just want to take it out on someone, say it. Stop making it sound like everyone knows you. Yeah, I figured she'd slap me. <laughs> Shut up. A full force kick flew at me. I gasped in pain even before it connected. You're all the same. What else can you do except mumble nonsense? Can say the same about you. I smirked with disdain as I stared back at her face twisted in anger. Note updated. Wonderful. So, what now? I think I should rest first. Let's get some stamina. And then we can talk. Let's, let's chat, missy. Click on one of the topics. Can you untie me? <laughs> what do you want? Well, there's no one else to talk to. So what's your name? I don't think she'll tell me. Huh? What's your name? The girl was staring at her phone and didn't hear my question, so I repeated it. Huang Yi. She, careless, she carelessly said two syllables before suddenly shutting up. She raised her head and looked at me cautiously. Say again? I secretly remembered the partial answer, but acted as though I heard nothing. <sighs> she dubiously wrinkled her eyebrow, then glanced at me while biting her lips. You think I'll tell you just so you can call the cops later? How should I address you then? How should I address you then? Hearing my response, she burst into laughter. How do you address me? Are you out of your mind? You can address me any way you want. I'm not here to be your friend. We'll see about that. No one can resist the Malice Diary charm. Older girl? <laughs> can you untie me? No. What do you want? What do you want? Are you an idiot? Money, of course. You think I enjoy kidnapping people? She grunted in disdain, then her mouth broke into a naughty smirk. Of course, teaching your type a lesson feels good too. Otherwise, you'd think the whole world only circulates around you. <laughs> the words were still aggressive. I had no idea why she was this mad. Everything aside, just the fact I didn't even know her in person made it bizarre why she had such a grudge. So what happens after you get the money? Kidnapping is natural for money, but money for what? Will they ask for more? Escape abroad? And most importantly, do they intend to let me go? What do you think? She raised the corner of her mouth and returned the question. The non-committal smile was creepy. It's none of your business anyway. You just pray your daddy pays up soon. That amount is nothing to you, right? I hope so too. 
Rain just upcovered my mind in shadow, but I couldn't do anything about it.